hard time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, if only she were not so naive. Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he, why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could an intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game? I can only scratch my head and wonder. Mr. Hamish, was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm the only one with a passion for botany. I do not think so. This photograph of you and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. Ah, but you have no right to. Do tell us more about your father. He was, indeed, the greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. He brought me in at the age of 12. Did he get on well with Mr. Dunn? No, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work, for Dunn always lived the high life. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes, he provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was, he declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the colonial collection room. Really? Oh, well, so I am mistaken. It ought to have been removed during the cleanup. This room is so small. Hmm. Do you know who moved it? I have no idea. Surely Mr. Dunn requested it. Do you have any more questions like this? Because fragments of rock are not my responsibility. Evidently. Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly, I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? 
Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert to Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Uh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. The Divine Syndicate. Does that name mean anything to you, by any chance? Not at all. But it is a very pretty name. Uh, thank you, miss. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of a uh, lyset, uh, something, or, or Lear, Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my God. I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passionate? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Are you quite sure? You do not seem to be so interested in plants. It's difficult, that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. And yet, I know that the Royal Naval College rejected your application. Ah, oh, you truly are as clever as they say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. He did his best to ruin my plans, although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Tell me, have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear.
The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes. 